There are an awful lot of people out there pretending to understand or acting like they can predict and prophesy what is ahead. Now, that said, there are some folks who have had connections and contact with some of the movers and shakers at the highest levels of the international corporatocracy which run most of this planet. Lindsay Williams is one of those folks, and Pastor Williams has been a friend of ours and a guest on this program for many years now. He has apparently come across some extraordinary new information that he offered to share with us tonight, so I invited him on, and here he is. Hello, Lindsay. Welcome back. Jeff, I want to thank you for calling me a friend. I guess we... I have had the privilege of being on your show quite a few times, and I guess we're getting to know each other well enough we can call each other friends. And at this time, there's really a need for people to have friends. I completely agree with you. So tell us a little bit more about what's going on here now. Well, after the election, uh, I picked up the phone and called my elite friend. You know who he is. And... I asked him a question. I said, what can we expect over the next four years? The information that I received, the only way I know to describe it is the most startling information that any person has heard since the founding of the United States of America. You want to say say that again, Lindsay? (laughs) (laughs) I, I did mean it exactly as I said it. When when I contacted my elite friend and I said, what's going to happen in the next four years? The information that I was given, uh, the only way I know to describe it is the most startling thing that any person has heard since the founding of the United States of America. You did hear correctly. I was given 10 agendas that the American people will face over Mm -hmm. the next four years if the people that the powers that be and they themselves have their way in carrying out. I I did not do any radio shows for about three weeks since the election. Uh-huh. I was startled. I was right. stunned. I right. was dumbfounded. And I said, I, I don't know how to approach this. Uh, I knew that many of the things were not known. And many of them you won't hear over the national media. You won't hear it in any newsletter, as you'll find out tonight when you hear all of this. Mm -hmm. It took me three hours and 29 minutes just to describe what I had heard when we put it on DVD. Wow. Uh, That's how intricate it is. Well, three and a half hours of data from you is a lot. And when I got through with that three and a half hours, I said, I can't do this. There's there's no way that I can leave the American people here. What is going to be faced by the public in the United States of America in the next four years is so unusual and so in need of a mindset change on the part of everybody in order to be able to face it until I said, okay, I've got to go a step further. I went back in studio again, and I did a second DVD series, not just one, but a series entitled how to survive the next four years. We called the first one the next four years, and I told everything that my elite friend told me. Everything. Took two and a half, three and a half hours to do it. Uh Then two hours, and we give no problems whatsoever. All we do is give nothing but how can a person survive? What are the solutions? What can they do? So, Jeff, it is an honor tonight that you would allow me to hear to attempt, if I can, to give these 10 agendas so people will understand what they're going to face. All right. Let's, uh, let's step into it and see where we go. This is, uh, this is about the biggest announcement you've ever made, and you've made some big ones. Uh, it is, and it's probably the most startling information that I've ever received. Now, some of this is so unusual that it's actually encouraging. And so I'll take them one at a time. Uh, First of all, is a prediction based on what my elite friend has told me, and that is that the elite do not, I hope uh, your listening audience is hearing the word not, the elite do not want a collapse of the monetary system in the near future. And I agree with you, and I don't think there's going to be one. They don't want it. It's not going to happen. I agree. And that's what the elite have told me. And 
uh, I think it w- it was put on the. Uh, I don't know how to say it except uh, I, I didn't take much in the sides of any of this uh, election campaign when Ron Paul opted opted out and said he was not going to run for the House of Representatives. Uh, he said that he thought we had two years. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit further. According to what my elite friends are telling me, I think we've got two to three years before there's going to be anything significant in the way of a climax as far as the monetary system of the United States of America is concerned. Now, that should be very encouraging to the average person because that means that you have time to do something about what you need to do. Now, there is going to be a time of very severe monetary problems in America. It is inevitable. You cannot continue with this national debt and the wild spending of Congress that they're doing and all of this charade. Oh, my goodness, when they talk about this physical cliff, I just sit back and and say, Americans, I wish to goodness you knew the truth and could talk to the people I'm talking with. Now, why they don't want to bring about this collapse, and I'm going to use a word here that is very forceful. They want to, over the next four years, bring about fullest debt creation. I hope everyone out in the audience catches that word, fullest. It's not going to be voluntary. Now, they want this uh, as a, for our purpose in order to be able to help them bring in the new world order the way that they want it. Let me try to explain what I'm hearing from them as to what forced debt creation is. Many of you who are my age, and I'm in my 70s, uh, many of you remember back when there was only one credit card in the United States of America. It was the American Express. Uh, MasterCard had not been invented. Visa had not come into being. And all of us back about 40 years ago got our American Express card, and we thought, well, this is something brand new. Uh, American Express, a number of months ago, they no longer were a credit card. They ceased to be that, and they became a bank. The government forced them into it. Now, this was forced debt creation on a company that had been strictly a, uh, a credit card for many, many years, and they didn't want to be a bank. But they had no choice mm-hmm. if they would continue to continue to exist. Right. Now, the same things happened to the banks of America. QE1 came in. They led us to believe that the whole financial world was going to collapse if Congress didn't pass the bill to give out trillions of dollars. And as a result, Congress was threatened. And because of it, the banks accepted billions and billions of dollars from the Federal Reserve. And they were forced, are you catching the word, they were forced into a debt creation situation whereby now they are totally ruled over by the Federal Reserve. This is exactly Mm -hmm. what the elite are wanting over the next four years' time. They want a forced debt creation upon every human being in the United States of America and most of the world so that that person is in such a condition right. that at that point they can bring in their new world order. Well, it's the t- way total they ins- want to do it. Yeah, they're enslaved. Uh, that's what they're after, and they're going to do it. Another good example of this is student student loans. When I was a young man, I went to college, got a bachelor's degree, worked my way all the way through college. Everything from bagging groceries in a grocery store to working for Avis, driving automobiles, and I worked my way through. They have convinced young people today that the only way to go is a student loan. This is intentional, and it is dastardly. It's something that only the elite would do. And when they get out of college and can't find a job doing anything but flipping burgers, because the jobs have been moved to China and India and Mexico and every place else imaginable, Mm -hmm. this is a perfect example of forced debt creation and now they have these young people right where they want them so that they are under control. And when I hear this physical cliff and talk with my elite friends, I just want to sit back and laugh. I cannot believe how hmm. they have reprogrammed yeah. the minds of the average American. They're rewired into stupidity. You're, you're totally right. Subservience, yeah. 
hive mentality. They do not individually seek to achieve anymore because to step out of line and become an achiever exposes them to peer pressure and mockery, and they will not go there. That's and it the, is stupidity. I, I'm glad that you used that word. You know, Jeff, you, you don't know my elite friend. I've never talked to him. I hope one of these days I can put him in touch with you. But I, I, you see things so straight. That's exactly what's happening. Through this physical cliff, they plan as a part of this so-called charade that's going on in Washington, they plan as a part of that to create debt creation in the middle class. And that brings me to the third agenda. The number one agenda was they do not want to collapse of the American dollar right now. And you can pretty well rest assured that you've got two or three or four years down the line. I don't give any dates. They haven't given me that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, one of the agendas is forced debt creation on every person that they possibly can force it on. I'm sure they won't be able to force it on you, uh, Jeff, and they won't force it on me because we are aware of the fact of what they're doing. And who is going to hurt the most? Okay, third agenda. The middle class in the United States of America is going to be taxed into oblivion. 